So can you share with us, what is the highest amount of money you've earned from your per diem job? And then how much is the most you've earned from your business in one month? Okay, so, oh God, it's gonna be like thousand maybe for premium, yeah. like something around there about making $52 an hour bonuses working maybe overtime. And then again, we're talking revenue. So that's not necessarily profit yeah. when we're talking about the business. Exactly. I would say our biggest month I think was a thousand. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Once I launched my first products, I was obsessed. I was like, people were getting broken mugs in the mail left and right. Like it was a mess. And I was like, I love this for me. Like. <laughs> What is up guys, Jason here. Welcome back to the channel in our series, Nurses to Riches, The Road to Fire. If you're a nurse and you ever thought about starting your own clothing line, then you're going to love today's guest, Eva. She's a nurse who worked a per diem job when she launched her own clothing brand. And you are going to be blown away by how much money she has been able to generate, as well as her reason for leaving the bedside only a few years after becoming a nurse. Now, Eva, tell us a little bit about yourself and what it is that you're currently doing for a living. Thank you so much for having me. I have been a nurse. I know that this is nurse, nurses to riches. So a lot of people that are listening are probably nurses. I've been a nurse for six years. And what I currently do for a living is actually not being a bedside nurse. At the start of 2023, I left bedside completely. And I now work full-time in my business that I started for nurses. So I own a nursing lifestyle brand. It's meant to make nurses feel seen and appreciated. We do merchandise, we have a community. And so I built that up over the past four years and I took it full-time this year. So wow. it's been a big transition year for me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. You know what? I We need to talk about that later because that's a leap that I want to eventually take. I'm still a bedside nurse. I work in the ER though, but I want you to take me back to where you grew up and why you decided to become a nurse in the first place. Yeah, I think I grew up in New Bedford, Dartmouth, Massachusetts area. And I honestly grew up such an achiever, like Enneagram three. I feel like that's a lot of nurses. They grow up as like this, you know, wanting to get all A's student, type A person. And I definitely grew up like that. And so when I went into nursing, I honestly did it because I was being told by a lot of people that like, that's a great career. It's secure. Uh, you're really, I was always really good at school. So they were like, you're really good at school. This is like a good fit for you. And I just listened to like my mentors a lot. And I knew a couple of people that were older than me that went into nursing. So I was like, okay, that seems like a good idea. I honestly didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and so I don't want to act like I was like, I was five years old and I knew from Pluto. <laughs> like that wasn't me. My entire life, actually, my parents and I guess people that were mentoring me always said that they thought I would either be a veterinarian or a teacher. And I feel like nursing is just in that world. Kind of yeah. It makes and, sense. Yeah, it makes sense. And so I ended up going to nursing and I fell in love with it. I did really want to do nursing because when I did anatomy and physiology in high school, we like dissected a cat in high school and I loved it. I was obsessed with anatomy and physiology. Like I loved that class. I really loved my AP psychology class that I took. So it kind of all just fit together where I was like, sounds good. Let's do it. And so I only applied to nursing schools and I excelled. I did great. I loved nursing school. I found a lot of interest in it and then went into the field from there. Yeah. Wow. And what year did you graduate nursing school? 2016 from Salve Regina. It's in Newport, Rhode Island. And yeah, like I said, I really excelled. I don't know if that's because I love nursing or if it's just because that's my personality type where I just always wanted to do really well at everything. And I'm super like motivated once I get focused on something, <laughs> but yeah, I loved it and went in from there. Wow. Okay. So, you know what, that's going to lead me to my next question. You did nursing for seven years and then you decided to quit bedside nursing and go into the business side of nursing. Mm -hmm. And my question is what led you to want to leave the bedside to go on to the business side of nursing? Yeah. I honestly, again, didn't really know what I was doing. I always want to like preface that. It's not like I have these master plans. I just kind of do things and then follow my gut from there. And so it wasn't something where I said, I want to make this jump. This is how I'm going to do it. It was more, okay. I was working full-time at the bedside, full-time hours. I've actually worked in a per diem role for most of my nursing career, which if we want to talk about that, we can, but 
it's just such a flexible role and it's such a great role. I'm obsessed with it. But I was working full-time hours within that per diem status for most of my nursing career. So when I was a per diem nurse, I, again, loved nursing. I really did enjoy what I was doing, but I started to see these holes in nursing, these gaps of like issues that were going on. And I think everyone that's a nurse knows there's a lot of (laughs) struggle that we deal with. And I wanted to start talking about that. So I just started talking about it on social media, if I'm being honest. I was like, I'm just going to like go on my Instagram and like talk about self-care and burnout and like my nursing journey. And I started sharing a lot about that. And it slowly developed into the business. And I found that I fell in love with talking about it. I fell in love with engaging with community online. And once I launched my first apparel item, once I launched merchandise under the name that I had decided on, which was Purpose People, I was like, this is for me. So I created the LLC. I started dropping more merchandise and it just developed into a brand. And then that per diem status was kind of what allowed me to go full time in the business with my hours. So it was like, I could just titrate the hours down if I wanted to and work more in the business. And then say the business was doing horrible, which that didn't happen, thankfully. But if it did, I could have just popped my hours back up and gotten more. So it was really awesome that nursing helped me so much to transition to business. And then this past year, like I said, when I fully left the bedside, that decision stemmed more from the fact that I was moving states. So I moved from New Jersey to Rhode Island just for personal reasons. And obviously I had to quit my job because I wasn't going to be commuting four hours to work. So... (laughs) When I quit my job, I just never got another one. But I think if I still lived in Jersey, I would probably still have that per diem role and just work my 12 hours a week, two to four shifts a month kind of thing, just lay low and stay at the bedside. But because I had to move states, I decided to just go full time in the business see how it went. And then I just haven't got another nursing job because the business has just filled me up so much. I'm loving it. I'm enjoying it. I think I will probably go back at some point in the future, but yeah, for this year, it hasn't been a thing. And I'm welcoming my first child into the world in like six weeks, which is insane. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So we'll see what next year brings with that transition into and parenthood for us. But for now, yeah, that's kind of a little bit of the story. I hope that was what you were looking for. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. So, and I want to talk a little bit about you leaving states and that was like the catalyst for you to just quit your job because I'll get to that later. But Monica and I, my wife and I, we're moving back to New York. We're currently in California and us moving back to New York will be the reason why I'm actually going to be leaving the bedside. But we'll talk about that later. So what specialty did you work in while you were working as a bedside nurse? I started off my first year as a new grad in a step down ICU. So it, and it was at a community hospital. So it really was like a little bit of everything. It was super general felt like, but I didn't know cause I was new. So I was like, this is great. Cool. And then when I transferred to the job that I've had for the last five plus years, it remained in telemetry cardiology, but it was specialized in electrophysiology. So I got super specific and I worked in electrophysiology for the last five years and I loved it. It was inpatient. Can you explain what an electrophysiology nurse would do? Yeah. So it's a subset of cardiology and electrophysiology is all about electricity in the heart. So we did a lot of ICDs, pacemakers, SVTs. We did a lot of ablations. People that have any sort of cardiac arrhythmia are going to come to an electrophysiology floor. And then we got general stuff too. Like we got our regular cardiac caths. So people that have had end stemmies, heart failure, the basic, you know, general cardiology stuff too. But anything that was specific to heart arrhythmias or electricity in your heart would come straight to us for the inpatient floor. And it was so fun. I loved it. (laughs) And was this in New Jersey as well? Yeah. So I got a job at the number one hospital in New Jersey for cardiology. So that's why it was so specific because there was like six floors for cardiology and they all did something really specific. Like there was a floor just for like post open heart, a floor just for electrophysiology. So it got very specific, which is why I ended up in this like specialty. (laughs) Yeah. And how much were you earning per hour in that job? Well, first, let me tell you, when I got my first job at the community hospital, I'll never forget. I was making $27.99. Ooh, ouch. Yeah. So that was when I graduated in 2016, I guess at the end of 2016 was when I got my first job. Must have been. Wow. So I was making 27.99, and looking back, I'm like, that is nothing. <laughs> so. <insane. laughs> And that was in Massachusetts. Then I moved to New Jersey where I got the job in electrophysiology. And I think I started at 47, but again, I was per diem. So I made sure to, I made more because I was per diem, right? And my differential was also amazing. When I worked night shift, I made an extra 625 at night. So that oh, was- that's pretty good because- When I was working in New York City, I was working in the number one hospital in New York City, and I was making around uh, $47 per hour. 
But the night shift differential was like three dollars and fifty cents at the time. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? That makes no sense. Like, how are you working nights and only making an extra three dollars and fifty cents per hour? <laughs> yeah, I was making six twenty five extra an hour, which was pretty insane. And yeah. then if you work, and then if you're working at night, I mean, on the weekend, sorry, that's like another dollar. But when yeah. I left that job five years later, I think I was making like fifty two. I think I made like a dollar more a year on average, and I got health insurance through my per diem role as well. So I ended no up way. the first. So I got lucky because things just fell into place for me. So when I first started nursing, I was under the age of 26. So I was still on my parents' insurance. Yeah. So that first year that I was working per diem at that hospital, I was still on my parents' insurance. Mm-hmm. And then their hospital policy was if you work for a full year and you work over an average of, I think it was 24 hours a week, I think, mm-hmm. then you're eligible for insurance. It's not the same insurance that full-time employees get, but it's health insurance. So I got health insurance after, after that first full year, I got kicked off my parents and got their insurance. So I never really had to worry about health insurance because I was working full-time hours within the role and then still making pretty good money per hour. Again, New Jersey, I will say for any listeners that don't know about New Jersey, New York prices, they are a different beast than really anywhere else. So the cost of living was much, much higher, but still, I think that was a pretty good rate. So do you know the reason why most nurses in that hospital aren't working per diem? Because if you can work per diem and work over 24 hours per week and get health insurance, why not do that instead? Everyone is so afraid to have to figure out their own health insurance. So you would have to commit to health insurance on your own for a full year, like figuring Mm -hmm. that out, Googling it. Every time I bring it up to people, they're like, well, what about the insurance? That's the first thing that comes out of everyone's mouth. And like I said, I got lucky because I was on my parents for that year. So I just never really had to like stress about it. But looking back now, I would advocate so hard to just figure it out for a year. Like people do this all the time. I'm a full-time owner now and I have to do that because no one's going to give me insurance unless I go find it. Right. Like you have to do that as an adult now and people just get so nervous and they also get nervous about the security. So they're worried Mm -hmm. that if the unit gets a ton of full-time employees, they can't, they can say, you know, you, there's no full-time hours for you. Sorry. Like everything's working. And so there's no security on hours. There, there's no security on hours, but there is a nursing shortage, which is the security on hours, yes, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if you want the security on hours, you can also, again, be flexible and aggressive. Like I always was being like, oh, there's another unit that, that needs help. I'll float over there. Like if you're mm-hmm. flexible, it's it's so much better. I reached out to their occupational medicine at the hospital I was working at, which is nothing to do with inpatient. It's literally employee, new employee intake, COVID vaccines, flu vaccines, because everyone in the entire hospital has to be vaccinated for the flu to be able to work. And so the nurses from the hospital are the ones who do that. So I, in the fall, would get tons of hours vaccinating people for the flu vaccine, which is so much easier than inpatient nursing. And they would be the same rate that I got paid as my per diem role. Yes. You have to just be flexible and aggressive with hours, which a lot of people would prefer like people that have families and they want the security. They that's that. I think that's just why they don't do it. Yeah. I remember when Monica, my wife wanted to go per diem, she used Mm -hmm. to, uh, she was working telly initially. And I remember the conversation going something like, you want to go per diem? What if you don't get the shifts that you want? What about this? What about that? And I was so nervous and I couldn't believe she wanted to go per diem. I was yeah. really nervous at first, but I was like, all right, you know what? Just go ahead. Just do it. And I remember the first paycheck we saw when she came home. I could not believe my eyes because like we're in Northern California and <laughs> she currently makes $134 per hour as a per diem nurse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? yeah. When I first saw that paycheck, I could not believe it. And I was like, you didn't even work that many hours. And this is how much you made. I think she brought home like six thousand, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 in two yeah. weeks. And I was like, okay, you know what? I think you made the right decision. (laughs) And ever since then, I think in the five years that she's been a per diem nurse, there's only been like one month or so, maybe one and a half months where she didn't really get that many shifts at all. But Mm -hmm. every other month after that and before that, she's gotten like whenever she wants to work, there's availability. So. And and the cool thing is, just like you said, it's so flexible. Like if you want to go on a vacation, what she does is like she just matches her schedule with mine. And then when I'm off, because I'm off nine days every other week, we'll just go on a nine day vacation and she'll just work before and then she'll work after. 
And it's yep. like, I think it's the best combination, like where I get the benefits for both of us and she just goes per diem and she just matches her schedule with mine, but she makes more, a higher hourly rate than I do. Yep. Yeah. I would work day shift. I would work night shift. People would be like, yeah. why are you working day shift all of a sudden? Yeah. I'm like, just ask the manager and they need help and I'm per diem. Exactly. So they don't care what I do. And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I love it. I just do whatever I want. Like I just fly under the radar. <laughs> and another thing I would do is which I don't know what it's like in inpatient now. Cause again, I've been away for almost a year at this point, but when they would give sign up bonuses, right? Like there's all these holes in the schedule. If you sign up for a 12 hour shift, the bonus is $300. Like at some shifts yeah. were $300. dollars if you wow. pick them up. I, at the beginning of the month, wouldn't sign up for full-time hours. I wouldn't sign up for three shifts a week. I'd sign up for like one or two shifts a week. There'd be all these holes in the schedule the second that thing came out, my name would be all over it. And I would make an extra thousand or $2,000 wow. just for waiting and then picking up those holes and knowing yeah. that I was going to maybe get the exact shift that I wanted or whatever. But then like the boom, that's your vacation money. Yeah, it's like exactly. Strategy and just being willing to be flexible. Yeah. And this is, you know, that's why I like having these conversations and showing yeah. it to the rest of the world, because a lot of people don't know what kind of things they can do to increase their income, even as a bedside nurse. And that's, that's really smart for you to not fill your entire schedule, knowing that there might be availability later on with a bonus as an incentive. So that's pretty cool. That, okay. So at what point did you decide that you wanted to start a business though? Because you're working as a per diem nurse and you said you, did you start the business before you moved to Rhode Island? So I just moved to Rhode Island in the beginning of 2023. So I had started Purpose People. I launched my first product in October of 2019. So it started way back. So it started when I was pretty in New Jersey and it really developed. So I launched my first product in October of 2019 and then COVID hit early 2020. And so I was working full-time hours on which on a COVID unit because our unit got com converted to a COVID unit. And luckily, I think what catapulted a lot of my business was I was building it during COVID, which sounds stressful, but if you think about it, we were working full-time hours. And then what were we doing? Coming home to absolutely nothing. I had no social life because none of us had a social life. And that gave me all of this extra time to start building the business. And so I was just super passionate about nursing for like two years time. It was like, I was either at the hospital or I was working on this at home, talking about what we were going through, sharing it on social media, building the brand and realizing that it could be something more legitimate as well. And I think the struggle of working bedside fueled my passion for the other mm -hmm. side of it even more because I was like, oh, I can get out out of doing this full time. <laughs> if yeah. I pour myself into the business and it's successful, I can do something I love and not have this torture of working bedside and being so exhausted and the, you know, the struggles, the mental health struggles, all of that. Mm -hmm. And so I think I really built it during those like 2020, 2021 is when it really started to like legitimize, become its own thing. And when I realized it, really was going to be like its own brand. And can you go through what kind of companies you had to reach out to, to develop these sets of clothing that you were looking to sell or the products that you were looking to sell? Yeah, because I was a nurse, right? Like no business experience. I exactly. never took this class ever, not even once in college, like nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was truly starting from ground zero with that, but my passions were really just fueled it. So I, when I realized I wanted to do products, which there was a lot that led up to that. I was just doing trial and error. I started like a book club. I was doing like personal development book clubs. I didn't really like love that. I was doing like a little blogging. I was like, not for me. But once I got to the point of being like, okay, I think apparel is the next thing I'm going to try and see if I really love it. I actually hired a mentor. So I found this random girl online who was doing clothing and had her little store online. I was like, that's kind of like what I want to do, but it was nothing to do with nursing. She sold apparel in Detroit for people that live in Detroit. So I was like, perfect. She can just teach me what she does. Yeah. I had five or six Zoom calls with her that were like 45 minutes to an hour. And I paid $150 for each one. So I was like, okay, I'm going to be willing to invest whatever this is, like over a thousand dollars over yeah. X week's time and like, see if I can do this. So yeah. that's what I did. And she really gave me all the information. So she, again, it's only 45 minute call. So she's giving me yeah. the basics. She's like, this is how you would market it. This is how you convince people to buy it. This mm -hmm. is you're going to look up these screen printers, like go on Google. This is what you're going to Google. And then you're going to call them and you're going to ask them these questions. 
Then you're going to use this website to like develop a design, pick what you're going to do. Like she just gave me those basic steps, which I think is all you need. Sometimes when you have too much information, you end up getting overwhelmed and taking no action. So that's what I did. And once I launched my first products, I was obsessed. I was like, people were getting broken mugs in the mail left and right. Like it was a mess. And I was like, I love this for me. Like, <laughs> just, yeah. you know, right? you're screwing it up and you're just still fired up about it. And so that's kind of <laughs> my journey a little bit. But then I started launching apparel and that became more of like the face of the brand was like, okay, this is going to be a nursing lifestyle brand based around merchandise. We're going to provide community. It uh, developed into give back efforts for nurses too. And so that's kind of like the overall vibe of what we do now. So was the first piece of clothing that you sold just one item initially? So it started with actually six mugs. So mm -hmm. I got six different ceramic mugs and I launched those first in October. And those were like the first six things I did. That was like my big launch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's why I was joking. Everyone's getting broken mugs in the mail. Cause that was like the first thing I ever did. And then, cause I didn't know how to package them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you live and you learn. But, um, <laughs> Then in January of 2020, I launched my first apparel products and I launched one sweatshirt, one, one sweatshirt and two t-shirts, I think, or two sweatshirts and one t-shirt. I forget, but I, there was three products and our, yeah, it was two sweatshirts and one t-shirt. I remember it's all coming back. <laughs> and was this all a direct to consumer type of thing or were, did you have a, like a print on demand thing going on where you worked with a company that printed everything and then shipped it out for you? Or did you do it all in house? The way I did it. And the way I still do it is consistent through and through is a screen printer. So I design them. I pick the products. I have a screen printer professionally screen print the designs on the products. And then I receive the product complete with the design on it. But we re we organize the inventory and ship it out to our customers. Wow. That sounds like a lot of work on your behalf. Yeah, we have a whole operation going. Like <laughs> I, oh, I forget how much we sacrificed because we're in a better place now. But when I talk about 2020, 2021, 20, 2022, even when we were growing this business to a place where we're taking it full time, we lived in a tiny one bedroom. Cause like we said, New York, New Jersey prices were absolutely insane. I was getting married. I was saving for a wedding. So we were living in a really small, small apartment. And this apparel, no joke was taking over the entire apartment. Like the walls were lined with, with, the shelving units yeah, from the floor to ceiling it literally was. And we had to like, make sure none of that was near the kitchen. Cause if we cooked, we don't want the smell of that to like, affect, like affect yes. the clothes. that these people that are building businesses are doing this stuff on the back end to try to build it. Yeah. We had like everything set up and organized, but it was, it took over so much square footage of our place. Like, mm. and it got to the point where we were just like, being smothered by it and we had to like get out of there. And so then now yeah. this year, when we took this leap to move to Rhode Island and go full time, we have dedicated rooms. It's like way more official, it feels like, which is awesome. But yeah, there's definitely a sacrifice that goes into it too, because with product, it's physical product. So it takes yeah. up space and it's a challenge. <laughs> so was your husband helping you with run this business from the get go? I will say my husband is so supportive. He never said a word about me just being like, I'm going to go on social media and just talk about this, talk about that. I'm going to launch mugs, like bring these boxes in the house. He was always just like, do you girl, like have fun. <laughs> and I think he, he was like me. He didn't know if it was going to be legit or not. And then once it started to be legit, to feel like, okay, this could be a real job. This could be a real thing. We could make this our livelihood. He was all on board and he's always been all on board for anything that I, want to do, which is like such a blessing for me, but he always was more of just like a helper. So I am like the director and I'm like the head honcho. I'm very like type A control freak. And he's just like, let me know what you need. And I'm there to help you. And so that's kind of how we started working together on it. We would have times, I think where he helped the most was like, anytime we went viral, right? It's like, you get a huge influx of orders and you have to get them out in a certain amount of time and things can get chaotic quickly. And so he was there to just to provide that like time and energy to put into like organizing, shipping, all of that stuff. And now he works full-time in the business with me. So we're both doing it together full-time all the time yeah. uh, this past year, which is so crazy. And so he covers 
way more of like the product side. So logistics, customer service, organizing product, shipping product. And then I do way more of like social media, marketing. I'm the brand voice, all of that stuff. So that's kind of where roles have played out. You know, I feel like running a business is so much easier when you have a partner that is like fully on board with what you want to do in life. And that's what, that's like the dynamic that my wife and I have. And yeah. actually, so we run this YouTube channel, but we realized that we want to start making videos to like focus on the personal side of, of our lives as nurses and our transition outside of the nursing field. Because like I said, we want to move back to New York city and we're going to quit our jobs. But people yeah. are wondering why we would quit jobs where I'm making $103 an hour as a staff nurse and she's making $134 an hour. So and amazing. even after all of our expenses are, are paid, we have tens of thousands of, do of dollars left over. So everybody's wondering if we're making a big mistake. And mm -hmm. we want to start documenting our reasons for that. So my wife is actually starting uh, like, a, like a lifestyle or a, a blog portion of a chat of YouTube channel where she just focuses on making videos of our, of our daily lives and what it is that we're going through and how we're going about it. And I feel like, you know, the fact that she's on board with like trying to grow our brand in general, it, it just helps me because I can focus on the financial side of the nursing thing, but she'll focus on the personal side of it. Yeah. And, and anytime we've wanted, like anytime I've wanted to start a business, she is like on board a hundred percent with it, no matter what. And I'm like, I cannot believe she's like dealt with all of the business failures that I've had to go through <laughs> and she's still here, you know? Yeah. So like to see that your husband is on board with you. I'm like, that is so cool. I, I give it up to him and I'm, you found the right person to be able to, uh, you know, for him to be able to like help you with everything that you need. That's it's hard to find somebody like that. Yeah. And I'm the you in the relationship where like if my husband was like, I want to go per diem from full time. I'd be like, I'd be like, I don't like know if you should. I don't know. Like I'm like a cautious one Yeah, yeah. Like, when he does something. But then when it's me, I'm like, let's just try this. And he's like, yes, what? exactly. So at what point did it start making financial sense for you to say, you know what, maybe I could give up my nursing career at the bedside and just focus 100 percent on this business? I think the times that we've gone viral say so much and not to make it about, about virality because the success of the brand is based on the fact that we do this every day consistently forever. And then when you hit, it's like very exciting, obviously, but yeah. times that we've gone viral where I was working full-time hours mm. were very revealing to the fact that there is at some point going to be a divide where we have to choose where we put our time and energy because the schedule's out. I have all of these shifts I have to work. We go viral, right? We have a thousand orders to get out and all of this product coming in that needs to be organized, folded, shipped, and things are on a timeline and they need to go out. And I'm working 12 hours, if not 14 hour day, whatever at the bedside. Those times were so stressful. I can't even tell you how stressful they were because there's like no sleep. You're just grinding it out. Yeah. And when you're looking at the paper of, if you're looking at the report of money, basically, you're like, yeah. I need so much money selling this apparel and I'm making a fraction of that for the shift. I would much rather just be doing the product side of it. When you realize the time you put in can get you so much more money, basically. Yes. Um, yeah. You start to just realize that there are other, other paths that you can take. And like I said, I think it is about finances, but it's also about what gets me excited. Like the times that purpose people's done really well, or we have a big project that does well, I am so excited about it that I'm like, I, why wouldn't I want to do what I'm so excited about all the time versus mm -hmm. moments in nursing where I do feel that excitement, but they're a lot more few and far between, mm -hmm. I think is very revealing. Yeah. So can you share with us, what is the highest amount of money you've earned from your per diem job? And then how much is the most you've earned from your business in one month? Oh, in one month? In one month. Okay. So, oh God, it's going to be like 6,000 maybe for per yeah. diem, like something around mm -hmm. there. I'm making $52 an hour, bonuses, working maybe overtime. And then again, we're talking revenue. So that's not necessarily profit yes. when we're talking 
in the business. Exactly. And with yeah. apparel, the margins are a lot tougher because you're paying a lot for a product and for screen printing and things like that. But so they're about, just to clarify, they're about what, 15 to 25% margins or higher? I would say that? higher. I would say like 40. Okay. Probably. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. We, we try to like do really well on our margins, but I would say our biggest month, I think, was 65,000. Oh my gosh. <laughs> insane Girl, you are killing it that's what i'm telling you like when you go wow. viral or like that's why i keep using the word viral which i know is like yeah. kind of annoying because it's mm-hmm. just like you can't control that yeah um, no the times yeah. where you but i actually think you can control it but anyway the times where your strategy and hard work pay off and things hit for you or do really well and you you see a month like sixty five thousand dollars, you're sitting there and you're like what the, why am I spending my time doing this? Like, and not even because I don't like the bedside. It's just when you're thinking about your financial future and your family and things like that, and your happiness, it just makes a lot more sense to go for the thing that is riskier, but could also pay off way bigger. Yeah. And so that, that was our biggest month, which was absolutely insane. Which is why I got to speak to what you just last, what you just said at the end of that sentence is that, you know, the biggest payoff may be the riskiest thing for you to do. And, you know, when I was talking about earlier that Monica and I, we plan to move back to New York, even though like we're making so much money over here and we're going to quit bedside nursing is because I can see our, like the vision that I have for our future is a lot bigger than what we can make from bedside nursing. Yep. You know, we, we sure we can make like three, four hundred thousand dollars a year over here as bedside nurses, but we have to put in a lot of time to make that kind of money. Mm-hmm. Whereas with your business, you you create a product once and you can sell it for eternity. Right. Like if you look at your the apparel that you sell, you created a design once, put it on your pieces of clothing and that same design can be put on different types of clothing that you want that you want to sell, but you do that, put it on a website and you're able to sell it to the masses. You can't, you just don't have that level of control as a nurse working a bedside, working a W2 job. So mm-hmm. my, my reasoning for wanting to leave is because I know that if I leave the bedside, I have no choice but to make it work. Yeah. And I kinda, I kinda sense that when you said, okay, we're moving from New Jersey to Rhode Island, this has to work let's leave the bedside because there's no other alternative. This, I like, you're so passionate. I can tell <laughs> you're so passionate about you do what you do, which is how I feel about this. And like talking to people like you, I love hearing stories like this. And I, and that I can see reach, being able to reach so many people and people don't realize like you can also get sponsorships when you have a social media presence, you know? So like, I've gotten sponsorships and this is, it's not much money, but like it's each sponsorship that I've gotten is at least Mm $5,000. So if I can continue in that route, but also I want to get to a point where I can show others how to grow on YouTube as uh, like, you know, like you do TikTok. I know nurses that do Instagram, but there's not many nurses that are making a very successful living off of YouTube. So I want to show nurses how to monetize the YouTube side of, of their nursing skills. Um, because like, I personally know one nurse who's making at least $12,000 in the UK where she's earning $3,000 a month as a bedside nurse, but $12,000 as a YouTuber. And then I know this one uh, guy, he's not even a nurse, but like him and I, we became friends after we realized that we started YouTube at the same time. But his first year getting monetized, he made six hundred and ninety-seven thousand dollars. Yes, his Insane. first year, he, and he blew up because he talks only about finance. He's not even a nurse. This year, he's going to make three million dollars wow. from YouTube. That's amazing. <laughs> and yeah, and he only posts one video a week. And just by posting one video a week, the fact that you can make $3 million is just mind blowing to me. And not many people know how to monetize themselves on YouTube, which is why like, I need to get to a point where I'm just solely focused on YouTube and making it a real business so that I can show other people how to do that too. But yeah, that's part of the reason why we want to move back. Yeah. And I think like to speak to that too, with you guys moving, I think something I heard really early on that like has never left my brain is you're currently living in your worst case scenario if you're thinking about doing something else. So it's like, like the worst case scenario is like you move to New York and yeah. it sucks 
and you don't make any money. And all of a sudden, like you wish you could go back to your staff jobs. You literally can because they exactly. need you and they're going to go, you're going to go back and you're going to make a hundred dollars an hour, just like you are now. And then you'll yeah. know it wasn't the right thing versus yeah. sitting in this secure job that everybody like is like, why would you leave it? And yeah. just wondering if you could be killing it, doing what you love. Like, yeah, it, it's just, it's just, it's almost as if they believe that if you're a nurse, you're never going to be able to find a job if you quit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, how easy it is for, especially if you have experience, I've been a nurse for 11 years now, so oh. it's going to be so much easier. It's, and you know, I have so many connections and having a social media presence allows you to make so many connections. So mm -hmm. even if I left nursing for a year, two years, I've, I have connections all over the place. I can yep. get a job yep. in an instant, you know, but okay. So now, but I want to get back to all of this that you do. Okay. Now you're living in Rhode Island. Do okay. you have employees? Are you guys still managing this yourself? We're just managing ourselves. But like I said before, with the screen printer, we almost have like contractors. So the fact that we have someone printing all of our stuff, it's, he's not our employee, but he's definitely no. our partner. So we have, weirdly enough, he actually lives in Florida. We get all of our stuff shipped from Florida. Florida. He's like a local guy because yeah. we just have such a good relationship with him. We started out with him in Jersey. He moved to Florida. And because yeah. we just love him so much, we yeah. make it work. Like we have a long distance relationship. Um, so... <laughs> We have our screen printer and then it's me and my husband full time. But I think with where we're at financially in the business, that's what makes the most sense. And I don't really have a plan to hire out until no. we are making more revenue, I would say. Interesting. So once the products get delivered to you, you guys package them and ship them to your customers? Yep. So we organize all the inventory, make sure it's folded, like inspect it all, obviously get it organized on shelving units so that it's like stored in our warehouse, which is within our home, but that, in you know, our space. And then we have all the shipping supplies to go on the back end, look at the orders, get them shipped out and then make runs or pickups or whatever from like UPS, USPS and get them out the door. Yeah. I cannot even imagine how much work you had to do when you made that $60,000 that one month. <laughs> For the amount of money you're making, it's not that much work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you probably calculated the amount of hours you spent, it'd be a very high hourly rate that you're making. Yes. But yeah. the fact that all of a sudden it's like, you have to work 50 hours to get all those out, like all in a very short amount of time is yeah. very stressful. But see, that's why you need to have more kids so they can help you package all these products. Yeah, I know. We're getting, we're getting started on the first one soon. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> so what are your plans with this business going forward then? I think this next year, I definitely have plans, but I also know that, like I said, I am due to have my first baby in six weeks. So I don't want to pretend like that's not going to drastically affect the fact that my husband and I run this business together and we're having a baby thrown into it. And so I think for next year, I definitely need to like give myself grace of like, it's going to be okay if for the first few months of her life, you know, it's not going to be the same as it was in 2023, like 2024 is a new year and it's going to be different. And also just this is kind of off topic, but now that we are both working full-time in the business, we do not get maternity, paternity leave. Like the business has given oh, us the maternity, maternity leave. So there yeah. are things that are challenging and struggles that you deal with too. It's not all sunshine and roses because yeah. if we were in the hospital, we'd be getting money, I'm sure, yeah. from them. Yeah. And so that's like a big factor as well. But I think this next year, I've definitely learned a lot that partnerships, I know you mentioned sponsorships, but partnerships are so huge. And I want to step more into that for 2024. So like we did a merchandise line, a merchandise line with Jen Hamilton this year. She's a big TikTok influencer and she has an awesome, awesome message. She's amazing. But we collaborated with her to do her merchandise line and it was so successful. People loved it. And I think doing more stuff like that, working with other nurses who have a passion and like collaborating with them is fun because working just me and my husband, sometimes it's like, you want almost like coworkers, you know, you want people to work with on things. So it's fun to have people to work with. And then just kind of continuing on. I mean, we do give back efforts. Mm -hmm. I call our method of giving cyclical giving, but basically just giving in cycles and giving in different ways all the time. So like, I'm not a big fan of 15% to X charity all the time or whatever. Like I think it's exciting to be like, okay, I have this idea and like this person's in need and how can we like fix yeah. it? And then 
spending four months working on that and then coming up with a new project a few months later. I just think it's really fun and engaging for people. So nothing bad to say about anyone who does a standard amount of giving, like giving is giving. That's amazing. But I want to step into partnerships, um, sponsorships, partnerships with different influencers, continuing on with what we're already doing. And then I want to do a really fun give back for 2024. So I would say that oh. that's kind of the direction we're headed. Wow. You got a lot on your plate. <laughs> yeah. And then I guess being a mom will be in there too. <laughs> yes. Because we started our YouTube channel before our son was born. So we have, uh, for some context, we have a 17 year old daughter and, um, it's my wife. So it's my wife's daughter, right? But I came into the picture when she was 15 months old and um, I legally adopted her. So she's basically like my own, but she put us through so much growing up and we're like, we're not going to have a kid together. This is no, this is too much for us. And now we have a two year old son. Okay. So oh, when awesome. our son came along, yeah. <laughs> so before our son came along, we started the YouTube channel. And I was dedicating a lot of my time towards it. Like it would take me 26 to 32 hours just to edit one video. Mm -hmm. But when he came along, I was getting like three hours of sleep per day because I was working on the YouTube channel and like I wanted to make myself present for him as well. But now it's gotten a lot easier because we have him in a preschool. And I felt like that was the best investment for all of us, for him and for us, because now he's socializing with kids. Because, you know, during the pandemic, it was rough for all kids. They weren't able to socialize with anybody. So we couldn't even introduce him to other kids at the time. But now once they started opening up the daycares and the preschools, we enrolled them in a preschool. And, you know, initially I, I didn't want to do it because it's like, you know, it's, it's pretty expensive. It's like it's like thirteen hundred dollars, which is not much compared to what my brother paid. He paid like three thousand dollars a month. Wow. for his kid. Right. But I thought, okay, this is, it's $1,300 a month, but what can we get out of it financially if we do this? So we put him in, in the preschool and immediately after we did that, I realized, oh my gosh, I have all this free time now. Like I can really make more videos. I yeah. can focus more on the business. So now we're seeing a bigger return on our business because we decided to put the investment in him and us by putting him in preschool. So if you can, if you don't have any family to help you, because that's another thing, we had our mom, my mom, who lived with us for like half the year. Oh. So she helped us with that. And then she would go back to New York for the other half and then come back. She did this for two years. So for half the year we had her, which really helped. But yeah, Huge. if you have, yeah, if you either have a uh, family or friends support, that's big. But if, if possible, I would say it sounds terrible, but if you can put them in a preschool, trust me, it's going to be the best thing for all of you, because then you can still focus on the business and you can allow your child to grow with the other kids and learn from them. Yeah. Um, I think it just, it's going to be one of those things you just navigate as you go. And obviously like, yeah. this next year, 2024 is we're going to be, she's going to be here. She's not going to be anywhere for the first year. And yeah. I, after that, yeah, I think too, it's so good for them to, like you said, socialize with other kids that yeah. it's something I think we... I would want my daughter in, I think, regardless of the business side of it, just to like exactly. social kids, even yeah. if it's just like morning school a couple of days a week or something like That's that. That's true. And I mean, we were so nervous about putting him in a school that we waited almost two and a half years. We actually just put him in like three months ago. So we waited a while because, you know, it's your baby. You don't want to like give him away. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we felt like we were giving him away to someone else and, and they, they hurt us, you know, but he's so happy. He loves it so much. And we're like, okay, we made the right choice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's but, awesome. um, okay. So now for nurses that are interested in your apparel and they want to buy your stuff, how do they find it? So purposepeople.co is our website, dot, not dot com dot co. And then purpose people co is all of our social media. So we have a TikTok account. We're just getting started on TikTok, but I'm messing around with it. I feel like it's a platform we have to be on, but I would say our main hub is Instagram. So purpose people co on Instagram is where you can find us. And that's where, you know, we kind of, are on there daily sharing the behind the scenes that's where you can find out about what we're up to give backs new stuff coming out it's really fun if you enjoyed this video then you're going to want to watch this video here where i speak with a nurse who was bullied so much at her job that she made the decision to quit and now she's running a business that's generating over five hundred thousand dollars per year